¿Sabes qué es el abismo visual? El abismo visual es un artefacto creado por la psicóloga Eleanor Gibson y sus colaboradores en 1960, que simula un abismo o precipicio artificial para investigar cómo es la percepción de profundidad en los bebés sin el menor peligro. El artefacto consiste en una mesa con un cristal en la parte de arriba que tiene dos mitades diferenciadas. En una mitad se coloca un mantel o un hule con dibujos parecidos a un tablero de ajedrez muy cerca debajo del vidrio, mientras que en la otra mitad se coloca a bastante distancia, como a un metro aproximadamente. En las situaciones experimentales se coloca a los bebés encima de la mitad de la mesa poco profunda y son animados a que crucen por el abismo visual. Eleanor Gibson realizó sus investigaciones con bebés de diferentes edades y con distintas especies de animales. En sus estudios observó que entre los 6 meses y medio y los 12 meses los bebés no respondieron a los inceptivos que se les ofreció para que cruzaran y ya no atravesaban el abismo, presumiblemente porque ya poseen al menos algunos de los elementos de la percepción de profundidad. Como conclusión de sus estudios, podría decirse que a los seis meses los bebés ya perciben la profundidad y que la percepción de profundidad está desarrollada a los siete meses. Observar en estos vídeos las distintas reacciones de los bebés. Os dejo un vídeo que puede encontrarse en internet con imágenes de las situaciones experimentales planteadas por Eleanor Gibson. As soon as a baby can move about, he can be observed in the same way as other animals. This is what the baby sees when he is placed on the center platform and looks at the far side. His mother stands opposite him, twirling a toy and beckoning to him. Thirty-six babies, six and a half to fourteen months old, were placed in the center like this one and watched while their mothers stood for two two-minute periods on each side. Here is another baby who has just been placed on the board. Almost all of the babies went to their mothers at the near side, as this one is doing. This baby, too, is going to his mother on the near side. But when the mother stood at the far side, nearly all the babies refused to go to her, like this one. Os dejo también otros extractos de otros vídeos para que podáis ver en qué consisten estos estudios sobre el desarrollo de la percepción de la profundidad en bebés utilizando el abismo visual. Study, babies between 9 and 12 months, are brought into the lab and placed on a large plexiglass top table. Half of the table has a checkerboard pattern, just underneath the surface. But halfway across is a visual cliff, which the baby can tell drops off steeply. The plexiglass top continues, so it's perfectly fine to proceed. But the baby isn't so sure. 
and this is a big drop for a baby just starting to crawl. She wants to get across to get the toy, but she's cautious and looks to the opposite end of the table where her mother is. The parent is instructed to smile or make a fear face. If the mother is posing a fear face, the baby typically does not cross this stair step downward, this modified visual cliff or visual step. On the other hand, if the mother poses a smile or somehow poses a nonverbal communication that is not prohibitive but encouraging, the child is much more likely to cross over to her. This particular study demonstrates the role of nonverbal communication in determining the child's behavior in uncertain contexts. A baby... Everyone has had some kind of an experience feeling something kind of like fear of heights and it makes perfect common sense that we shouldn't jump over the edge of a drop-off because it's dangerous and if it's dangerous then we should probably be afraid of it. Probably. Exactly how and when this hypothetical fear develops makes for pretty gleeful research inside Dr. Karen Adolph's lab. We're discovering some surprising things that are flying in the face of, you know, how people have studied locomotion for the last hundred years. Including what babies do and feel when they're on a ledge. So the story about fear of heights is that there was a very, very famous classical study in developmental psychology by Gibson and Locke in 1960 that showed that human infants and infants of a number of different species will avoid crossing over an apparent drop-off on what they called a visual cliff. As soon as the baby can move about, he can be observed in the same way as other animals. It's a, a glass table and on one side there's a checkerboard pattern surface right under the glass. The other side of the table the pattern surface is way down on the floor, so visually it looks like a big three-foot drop-off. So when human babies first begin crawling, most of them will crawl over the apparent drop-off, but after several weeks of crawling experience, then they'll begin to refuse to crawl over the drop-off. And the conventional interpretation of this was that infants are avoiding the drop-off because they're afraid of height. She's backing away. <laughs> well, she's not interested. She in wants crawling. no part of that side. On, the experiment Danielle. became the shaky foundation for the myth that crawling innately teaches us to fear heights. Babies avoid going over the drop-off because they're afraid of heights. How do we know they're afraid of heights? Because they avoid crawling over the drop-off. So as you may have noticed, the argument is circular. As it happened, the visual cliff was a better test of an infant's depth perception, not their fear of heights. And if you look closely, you may have actually noticed that the babies don't look particularly scared. It is a perfectly safe surface of support. So after one trial, human infants cleverly figure this out, and then they will crawl over the drop-off. So how do you really test if a baby is scared of heights? You can test babies at the edge of a real cliff where there's no safety glass. It's just an actual drop-off, and the drop-off can be adjustable, so it can be little or really, really big. And why stop there? Inside Dr. Adolph's Infant Action Lab, babies are tested on a variety of apparatuses. You can test babies at the edge of a slope, so it can be steeper, 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 crossing bridges that are wide or narrow over a surface of support, and so on. If there's no safety glass, you can test the same baby dozens on dozens and dozens of trials in the same session. And that means that you can determine for each individual infant when they think that that surface is safe and when they think it's risky within a couple of degrees of accuracy accuracy, like two degrees of accuracy for a slope. Dr. Adolph has spent 25 years running tests like these, and the resulting data sets are both convincing and adorable. Infants spend most of each trial right at the edge of the precipice. They're reaching their arm down over the drop-off. They are putting their little feet or their little hands on the bridge and taking little tiny steps at the edge. And all the while, they're doing it with either neutral or positive facial expressions. What's more surprising is how their approach changes as they learn different forms of locomotion. So what happens is that when babies first begin crawling, they'll crawl right over the edge. Then over weeks of crawling, their responses get more and more accurate until finally they're at adult-like levels so that they can tell precisely whether a slope is safe for crawling or whether a drop-off is safe for crawling. 
But then the next week, when these babies stand up and face these same drop-offs, same slopes, same apparatus, now as a new walker, they walk right over the edge. So in fact, there seems to be four learning curves in development as babies learn to sit, learn to crawl, as they learn to cruise, and then finally as they learn to walk. So if they were afraid of heights, you should just be afraid of heights. In the rain and on a train and in a tree, you shouldn't see four separate learning curves. So if babies aren't learning to be afraid of heights, what are they learning? I think that what babies are learning over weeks of sitting, crawling, cruising, walking, is they're learning to perceive the relations between their bodies and the environment. They're discovering what's possible and what's just a little too far. And you can learn that without feeling any sort of fear at all. In fact, Eleanor Gibson, the person who first invented the visual cliff, wrote later in her life, as a goat is peering over the edge of a steep crag, it knows not to walk off the edge. And she said, I don't think it's feeling any emotions at all. It just knows not to go. And that's what we're seeing in babies. Who probably know not to go. Probably. Espero que hayas aprendido mucho sobre el abismo visual. Y cuidado, no te caigas. <laughs>